Hello Habari, Wendy Water here and this video is going to be all about Turkana. So I recently went to Turkana with the Kenya Tourism Board, which kind of explains this hat. <laughs> and we were there for seven days and honestly Turkana is like one of the most challenging. It's actually the most challenging place I've ever been to. And I had about like 1200 people watching my Instagram stories and I got a lot of questions. So this video is going to cover all of that, you know, how to get there, where to stay, what to eat, things to do, you know, as well as just some insights from my actual trip to help you plan for your trip. So let's do the dumb thing. Let's get into it. <laughs> the easiest way is, of course, to fly. There's actually an airport right in the middle of Lordware town and it's serviced by several airlines such as Skyward. So you can easily find a flight there if you want. We are however adventure enthusiasts and we decided to take a land cruiser 4x4 there like the roads absolutely demand that you have at least a 4x4 for you to make it there and our whole itinerary took about seven days so on day one we went from nairobi to kitala it's a distance of about 400 kilometers so if you drive straight on it should take you about eight hours but you know we stopped to take pictures we stopped to have lunch and all that stuff so it took us longer and that's like a whole day gone day two we went from kitale to lodor it's about 300 kilometers it should take you about six hours ideally but we were slowed down by a couple of things first of all we stopped at kapinguria museum uh, i'm personally not really fond of museums to be honest so i'll just gloss over this bit but if you're really into history kenyan history and want to find out more it's especially famous for the kapinguria six so you can look into that we also stopped at the equator in timboroa and there we actually met like a pair of saudis who have been like on a motorbike trip around the world which is pretty cool then we took a very scenic road through west pokot into turkana it's so beautiful out there oh my goodness like the road first of all is very well tamed like all the way to turkana and it's still pretty new so no potholes uh, that was like a very smooth ride it's surrounded by beautiful scenery like there's mountains i mean not mountains but there's like hills and valleys and lots of greenery there's like a river flowing through there huge boulders it's really nice and then we also got some like really small like ripe juicy mangoes from the area so yeah i pretty like i really enjoyed passing through west pokot it was one of my most favorite places from that region and i've never really been like that far north northwestern i've never been that far before it's really beautiful but please just don't go taking random pictures of people on the street because they're not really open to it and they can actually be a bit hostile so you have to be careful about taking photos of people don't just go doing it and then we got into turkana so security is always such a big concern when it comes to turkana and it's one of the questions i got asked the most so let's address that we got a police escort at the barrier between turkana and west pokot paid two policemen one in each vehicle 1500 kenya shillings and they escorted us for a distance of about 50 kilometers or so now the reason for this is at first there have been incidences there have been raids that have taken place there carjackings you know people come and raid like a vehicle they rob passengers of all their goods there have also been cases of like you know tribal clashes between the turkana and west pokot some cattle rustling in the area i also want to stress that there's no point at which i felt unsafe during the duration of this trip most of these measures we were taking like getting the policemen were just like precautions because of the you know perception that already exists about insecurity in this area which yes they come from incidences that have taken place there in the past but i also saw some vehicles just you know driving on without getting the police escort so it's really on you to decide whether you want to pay extra for the police escort or not it was just a precaution measure and we were like i mean why not you can after crossing over into turkana the like good roads from west pokot they end right there you know the roads leading up to lodwa are terrible so terrible in fact that our car broke down <laughs> and it had to be fixed it even had to be taken to like a mechanic later that evening so we got into lodwa and then checked into our hotel stegra hotel which oh my god thankfully had a pool which is the first place we went and jumped into 
and just spend the rest of the night there day three four and five we just spent those exploring the area so i won't go day by day i'll just mix up the activities we did most of those my favorite bit about Turkana has to be lake Turkana. oh my god it's so beautiful out there and so tropical with sandy beaches and brightly colored boats and palm trees god damn it it's beautiful out there <laughs> so my favorite activities were therefore like centered a lot on the lake the first thing for instance is we went to Elias Springs it's like an Elias Springs hotel or beach resort I'm not too sure what it's called and it's like a really nice place first of all I would recommend it's a really nice place I would actually recommend that you stay there they have a range of accommodation for different budgets from like places going for a thousand bob per night to like really nice private pandas that cost a lot more so definitely go stay there and it's like right by the beach very sandy tropical palm trees like i said earlier so when we got there so when we got there we wanted to visit the central island so what we did is we got a speedboat from Elia springs hotel so the speedboat took us out to central island the ride was about um we took about 30 minutes i think to get there from Elia springs So I wasn't really prepared for the Central Island, if I'm being honest. First, I was wearing the I was wearing inappropriate clothes. I had like a white T-shirt and jeans. I didn't have any swimsuit, and um, I wasn't going to be left out. So I jumped right in. We had to stay in them until like 1 p.m. until 1 a.m. later that night. So <laughs> yeah, let's go to the Central Island. Right now we're like wet from head to toe because I didn't know we were going to be getting on the boat and getting in the water today so i didn't dress appropriately for it and also didn't know we were going hiking we we're going hiking up this place and me and harriet are actually both wearing the wrong shoes <laughs> trying to show you shoes so i don't know if we're going to get all the way up there with our sandals but i mean we don't have any options and we don't want to be left out either there was that and then i was also wearing the inappropriate shoes for climbing so please carry closed shoes for the hike up to the central island because it's a beautiful crater lake and once you get to central island then you have to hike up for about 20 minutes to get up there and the road there it's like like the path there it's very rocky and has a lot of loose sun 35 degrees on that day i actually remember like my phone giving me a temperature warning <laughs> that's how hot it was so imagine how hot the sun and those rocks were and my sandals like and my sandals ripped when i was up there they were pretty much useless so i had to walk back down with my bare feet my feet the soles of my feet were like a little burnt i had to like ice it and have some place and i had to ice it and put some ointment on it later that night for, for it to recover you know so yeah that was pretty grueling and we took a boat back out again to another island which is you know called crocodile island so like Turkana is said to have some of the biggest crocodiles around we actually spotted just a few you know by the way there's like an unexplored potential here like Turkana would be like a perfect place for water sports like bring out some kayaks bring up some surfboards some windsurf some surfboards you know bring jet skis bring all these things out and let people like go out and just enjoy spending time out on the water although again there's a matter of crocodiles but everyone i spoke to about this was like crocodiles are like more scared of people than people are of them and they don't really come to places where there's like lots of loud noise and people are like a lot of people gathered in but again i mean it's wildlife you can never really be too careful <laughs> on our way back from this excursion i think the captains were new or something like they forgot the way the distance back was supposed to be 30 maybe 40 minutes at most it took us 2.5 hours i'm not kidding you two and a half hours and the water was very choppy as well and choppy water for me always just makes me sleep everyone was like how are you sleeping in these conditions i mean it's like a baby being rocked in a crib like if a boat is constantly just rocking back and forth on the waves for me it's like snooze time you know so i was knocked the f out most of that time but by the time we got back to a experience i was like wet from head to toe i had only one sandal i was walking around looking like a homeless person and then guess what we meet the freaking governor governor nanok of turkana region because we were with the kenya tourism board a couple of pleasantries were exchanged and he's like 
you guys should come and have some you guys should come and have some yamachoma at my place later this evening and yeah we decided to go so first of all we, it was about like eight it was about 8 p.m. by the time we set off to go to his camp and we encountered some like serious sand dunes our car got stuck twice it took us like two hours just to get out of that situation by the time we got to the camp there's like a nyamachoma setting going on that was pretty interesting though like it's interesting the way that you kind of do the nyamachoma skewered and then it just slowly rotates on an open on an open fire and then it's roasted whole like they don't even take out the skin goodness and what we actually tasted you know after it's cut into chunks and served to you the skin is still on it tasted like really smoky kind of most people still know it for the drought and hunger and harsh conditions that used to prevail in the area for the longest time and so because the people didn't want any part of the goat to go to waste they would just cook the whole thing i was told even some of the things on the inside that are not typically eaten they found ways to like turn them into actual delicacies so that was pretty interesting so my instagram stories it was no joke i may have been laughing because i just laugh a lot and it's my first reaction to everything but man we were knackered other than goat another delicacy in turkana is fish the lake is right there i'm telling you i ate so much goat and fish on that entire trip if you're a vegetarian and you're intending to eat out during your stay that i'm telling you beforehand you're going to suffer if you can't just pack your vegetables pack your food whatever essentials you need beforehand it's going to be a hassle so anyway back to the fish tilapia nile parch catfish and things like that and it's also a very big business so we went to this place in kaloko kolko <laughs> there's a beach there called impreza where a lot of fishing is done again very scenic very beautiful palm trees colored boats really nice when bringing in their cats to the shore and then some of this is taken to the little villages where the people live and they have fishing villages actually where when you go to or as you're driving past all this is fish you'll see very small sized uh, fish hang up on like lines as if they're clothes you know to dry out in the sun so sun drying is one of the methods they use to preserve the fish they like deep frying you saw that being done at the fishing village as well and then there's a time we also went out right by the lake to talk to some of the fishermen and they were bringing out this fish that had been cut in half and then sun dried until they were so flat and so dry they almost looked like sandals even so brought from like an island into Turkana to the mainland by speedboat and then packed from the speedboat onto a truck taken from the truck to go get packed at like their factories or whatever and then these are then exported to places like up to congo uganda Busia. so it's really big business and it's a very big economic activity for the people there's also weaving like basketry is very big in turkana uh, i got a couple of souvenirs that everyone recommends you visit when you go to turkana is the site where turkana boy was discovered in 1984. so turkana boy is essentially like the first recorded man ever in history it's like a relic of a homo erectus youth dating back to i think 1.5 or 1.6 million years ago which is pretty interesting and that's why turkana is called the cradle of mankind the backstory of turkana bar is pretty interesting the actual experience is i mean a little underwhelming to me if i'm being honest first of all the drive from Lodre town is ridiculously long but that's just a thing you have in turkana which is why i said having a car is very essential distance between one key thing to do in the area and the next activity is like pretty long the roads are terrible and the roads are terrible especially outside of Lodwa. so there was that and when we got there the keys are manned by this lady who must be like at least 80 years old there was really no guide there to give us like the history of the place and all of that which i guess kind of makes sense because it's in a very remote area so maybe finding someone to post there is hard i'm not too sure what the reasoning behind that is but um i mean it's also providing some form of economic some form of income to these women you know you pay them for you to get in and all that so i guess that's good <laughs> for me if i'm being honest the turkana boy visit was a little underwhelming like it's just a skeleton i think it's actually a replica i think the main the actual 
specimen, the actual skeleton of this specimen is in a museum in Nairobi. Still, it's pretty interesting that Turkana is the cradle of mankind. I wouldn't take that away. Turkana, for me, has three phases. Maybe there's more, maybe there's less, but this is my impressions of the place. First, there's the desert, you know, dry, arid art surrounded by nothingness, no roads and the development and yeah that's especially under development and you just drive for miles i remember once we drove for so long we thought we had gotten into ethiopia and you remember president moi jokingly calling places like turkana shamba la mawe it leads to like a farm of stones like it's all some parts are just all stones nothing can grow there so there's that desert arid bit of nothingness and then second phase of Turkana is the lake it seems like you're at the Kenyan coast with the palm trees and the sandy beaches and the blue water and all that and then the third phase is Lodwa so Lodwa is thriving and bustling there's a lot of development going on there there's supermarkets and petrol stations and schools and it's like just a very first rising town if you want to invest go do that in Lodwa now you know business is thriving and booming so <laughs> once we on we just randomly decided to go check out the nightlife and this is after my sandals had been like ripped up at central island so i was wearing flip-flops from stegra hotel which is where we were staying i get to the door the bouncers are like you're not allowed to come in here in flip-flops and i'm like dumbfounded for a couple of seconds i'm like where am i this is lodware you know thorn who we were traveling with thorn really really awesome guy very like boisterous and friendly and outgoing he came and chummed the bouncers like he does with everyone and they let me in in my flip-flops but it was just a learning experience for me it's like lodware does not lodware is not waiting for you the fact that you haven't been there doesn't mean it's waiting for you to go and discover it and explore it and like <laughs> bring civilization out there it's like it already exists another place you can stay at which everyone recommends is cradle camp we didn't actually stay there but we had sundowners set up for us we got there pretty late and i actually didn't get to see the place but i'm planning a trip back to lodwar and i'm considering staying there so that's another option to consider there's also the our lady of mercy there's also the our lady of mercy statue which kind of resembles the one in brazil can just go and see it it's like at a nice viewpoint that overlooks lodway town transport it's going to be very hard if you don't have a car first of all the distances are very long and matatu is a very like limited scarce as well so be limited in terms of like how far you can go um the some of the sites you can go to as well as <clears throat> when you can go so it's just a lot easier if you have transport are there matatu yes there are a few but the schedule distances they cover it will just make it a lot harder for you but um this guy mario from crossing africa i mean he was in turkana and his whole thing was covering africa on foot so i'm not sure how he did it it probably has like an article out on this people also expect money in exchange for like the smallest of things like you'll just ask someone for directions and they're like <laughs> thing i'd recommend though is if you're driving out first of all carry a lot of water just for yourself it's so hot that you drink water and 30 minutes later it's like you haven't had water in a whole in, you haven't had water in like a whole week but also just to give out because there's some places that are very remote public transport is a problem people have to walk very long distances so you'll, you'll have especially like kids reaching out to ask you for water so you can give some of those you have clothes you don't wear anymore you can carry some of those and then just give them out as well along the way so yeah that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed it hope you're at least considering going to Turkana after this video if you do be sure to tag me in your content my instagram is water on the go and that's it for today i'll see you in my next video Bye. <laughs>